Hello everyone, welcome back to Concept Corner, where creativity is key. I'm Xandros. And I'm Grifter. And today, speaking of creativity, it's all about customization here today, so let's discuss. Trainer customization has been something that uh, that's been a long-standing uh, desire. Desire, yeah, something something that people tend to really gravitate towards. Something people really enjoy. Something a lot of people go at length uh, talking about. And different RPGs, one of the things people uh, profess they take the longest time doing is making their character. Oh yeah. So trainer customization, ever since it's been introduced, has been extremely popular and really should continue on. We need to expand upon it and let people kind of. Be the trainer that they really want to be. This is a very literal from the very beginning in our idea for games. Because character customization starts at the beginning of the game. Not only like they had in the last few games where you get to choose your hair color, eye color, and skin color from a basic preset. You get customized it from a set of options from the get-go as you wish. Skin color, multiple options. Eye color, multiple options. Hair color, hair style. The clothing you wear. This is a bit far out there, but one of the things I'd like to see is we're older. We, you know, we're older trainers. We've been playing these games about since they started. It would be nice to not have to play as a kid if we don't want to. It'd be nice to play as a more mature, um, you know, perhaps more of a more of an older teenage trainer. Well, they're all got up to that age now. They're not ten year olds anymore. They're sure. on. They're on thirteen, sixteen on average. Yeah, so I, I would. I wouldn't mind it being, uh, having the option to be maybe a taller, maybe a bigger. Person, mm, that might be a problem when it comes to certain functionalities, yeah, like sure. with the service Pokemon, the writing stuff. You might have to change the mechanics a little bit, yeah. there. It, but it'd be hard a yeah. little bit. But at the very least, if you don't affect height, you're at least affecting everything that's about your character. You get a certain set of clothing to pick from the beginning, and you can choose the colors there. You can even have a hat or not. You don't want a hat. You don't need a hat. Well, Who really, needs a hat? you could do that in Sun Moon now, anyway. Well, not from the beginning. Yeah, you just take the hat off. Because like, this is the very beginning of the game. Where I think, are you a boy or are you a girl? Well, here. You get a pick. I'm an Apache a... attack helicopter. Why do you never give me the option, Professor Oak? Helicopter, helicopter. <laughs> uh, the point is, that option's not been there for some reason I don't get. You can do stuff like get context and change your eye color later. Why not from the beginning? Right. You know, eh, I mean, you can have the context stuff later still, but I want to have my eye color. I'm, 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 a, I'm a pretty white guy. My eyes are a nice color blue, but not everyone has blue eyes like me that have my similar skin tone. Some are green, some are brown. <laughs> you know, give the option there. I think have more exotic colors like your reds and your purples and stuff like that for the context later. Everyone has the interesting hair colors. In fact, let's go anime style. You can have blue hair from the beginning if you want. We can play the game of who's the pro tag and have your crazy spikes and your in your weird crazy hairdos. Yeah, I mean you can have normal hairstyles and then a couple of extra ones from past generations like we talk about the the protagonist from Crystal. Actually, had this nice interesting hairstyle that's kind of like wafting out blue. Mm -hmm. It was really cool. So have those kind of options and clothing options from the go. But that's not where it stops. No, no. Customization goes beyond that. Instead of just customizing your trainer, it's, uh, it's, it'd be interesting to bring back previous uh, examples of customization, uh, customization that we used to have. In earlier versions of the game, or earlier generations of the game, rather, it was possible to, to customize even your Pokeballs. A with, little bit. With little things like, with little things like stickers, stickers that, that played a special effect when the Pokemon came out. There's a lot of people who, even these generations, specifically hunt Pokemon to capture them in a particular ball. Anyone that, that anyone that knows about Beast Balls knows what I'm talking about there, where they, there's a certain level of prestige catching a Pokemon on the Beast Ball because it's got the lowest percentage chance of catching Pokemon non out of, Ultra Beast, you know, non Ultra Beast out of any other Pokeball. So a lot of people like to go out there and, and catch Pokemon that they really like, like say a Cubone or you know, whatever Pokemon, or Cubones, or Gar or, or uh, yeah, whatever Pokemon it is you, you happen to enjoy, in that ball, just to say, hey, not only did I catch it, I caught it in the hardest ball to catch it uh, to catch it in. And so that almost has a level of prestige. I caught a, I caught a Deoxys in a Great Ball once. <laughs> I, think my I was out of Pokeballs. I uh, tried everything, and a Great Ball did it. I think my favorite one was the was the random time that, um, the, that I managed to catch Mewtwo in a Nest Ball, which <laughs> was a four-week Pokemon. Whew, that was lucky. I know. But what we're looking at here is not just the customization for the stickers, and we're not exactly going to switch the Pokeballs to the one you want. And I think that's going a little too far, and people might abuse that a little bit. Like, just to, I, you know, like, oh, look at this hard catch I got. I caught this Mewtwo with a Pokeball. No, you didn't. <laughs> but what we are talking about is changing the color option. 
and adding effects to your Pokeballs. So let's say you have an awesome Pokemon and an Ultra Ball, but you're not a fan of the black and yellow design. Maybe you want to have a different cover, color option. So we have like three or four color swap palettes for that ball specifically, and you can have different effects. Maybe when it opens, a certain kind of mist of smoke pops out for a second. Maybe a certain effect sounds like it's uh, the rattling of chains and it's a nice dust noir as it pops out. <laughs> Maybe if it's maybe if it's a Pokemon, uh, yeah, if it's a, a water Pokemon or something, and you want to kind of denote that, you could have a very brief rain animation play when the Pokemon first comes out, or a, a globe of water that that yeah, forms and then if, and then fades, sort of as the smoke would normally dissipate when you throw out a Pokemon. Anyway, just a silly little effect, uh, some something to add a little bit of flair beyond. Uh, what we get now, which is the only Pokemon that get a flare when they come out, are shinies with, little, with that little you know, chime and ching thing. That or happens. in the newer ones, which is like, here's a star. Yeah, the stars. Years. Maybe neat effects that, that play on that, but it's something you came up with. Your own combinations. I mean, there's a preset. We don't want to go too overboard with it. But the point is, we want to have the option. But the best part of all this is that it gives your team the ability to be unique. And it's that you can have and online battles and offline battles with your friends. So it's not just limited to the one-player version of the game, it's to the multiplayer aspect as well. You'd be able to see other, po other, other trainers you fight. So if, say if someone's got a Pokemon that they got on their birthday and they're super happy about it and you didn't know about it, you throw your Pokeball out, the tr the you know the person you're fighting throws their, po their, their Pokeball out, and then confetti and streamers pops out and you get the, what was that little razzer thing? You know, the, I don't know what that's called. I, uh, the, the what? Little razzer thing. Still never air horn? No, that's different. I don't know the hell you're talking about then, because Zeus? It's something like that, but you just blow into it and it just goes. It just goes oh, oh, the party favorite yeah, thing. Yeah, that thing. Yeah. It's a rasp. Is that what it's called? I think so. It's the only thing I've ever heard it as. That's what my mind remembered it as. I don't know. My mind remembers things sometimes what they're supposed to be, and sometimes it's just like. What's it sound like? That sounds <laughs> close enough. Use that. It's a razzer. Sure, you know what we're talking about, I'm sure. You can... But it'd be like it'd be like it'd be like a it'd be like a birthday party. You just sort of theme that would happen. Just Confetti in the you know confetti in the little celebratory the ah, noise yeah <laughs> and there's little things like that you can have fun with and the best part is some of the other stuff we've been talking about can affect this too let's say you go to a festival you're having a good time one of the prizes you get for achieving uh, maybe a tournament that goes on a little mini tournament you win it you get a special effect that is only available during that festival that you can put on your Pokeball made a certain sound or a certain uh, visual effect but you earned it and it's available most of the effects will be universally usable in any Pokeball. They're, They're just cosmetic, silly little frills yeah. that, you, that you get here now, but it's another reason to go, on it, to, to go on that adventure, to come back throughout the year and to get some of the neater effects, you know? Or even better, color swaps that aren't available at first for a Pokeball. They can get later if ones are more universal or maybe specific to a certain Pokeball. Let's say if you're going to a festival that's all about water Pokemon, you got that awesome dive ball or net ball, well, they've got a new color swap palette to it. I, mean, I think I think it's a pretty interesting idea, and I think people might enjoy having you know these Pokeballs, like the uh, basic red Pokeball that everyone knows. If you've seen any of the old promotional art, there was options like they had like blue and white ones and green and white ones. Let's bring those back, have a little fun with them. Uh, you can even bring back old celebrity balls that, that weren't really used in the games. The GS ball was a thing that never did find a use, even though it was in the data for Gen Two. Uh, there, it was a canceled event. Canceled event. Yep. So you could actually, there could actually be a reason to bring back at least the skin for the GS ball as potentially a, uh, a replacement skin for the basic Pokeball. Or just some little things like that. There's all kinds of customizations that can be thrown in here that go beyond just shirts and pants and hats and stuff for your trainer. Yep. But the fun part is, those things could be added in as well. The festivals, like talk about, like, you know, the Water Festival, maybe it's a Magic Car Pat. You get a nice little magic car pack to walk around with. I would definitely like to see a lot more silly items like yeah. that. Um, they have a Pikachu hat in the new one coming out. Yeah, Pikachu so. hat, uh, the Mimikyu, uh, the, the Mimikyu hat with the flaps that I've oh. that I've seen from Pokemon Go. Stuff like that. That you know, silly, silly things that really stand out. That maybe doesn't make sense for them to be on sale in a shop. It makes way more sense for it to be some for it to be a silly prize that you won for participating in a game at a festival. Mm -hmm. Sort of like how uh, actually that's something else I'd like to bring back. Something Generation 2 had that I really liked that had functionality with Pokemon Stadium 2 that really had me playing all the mini games and doing that was you had a bedroom. And there were plushies you would win from those. It would be cool to, have, to maybe have your room that you could decorate with plushies and with and, and maybe even maybe even uh, 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 like a, like a mannequin that you can dress up in your favorite outfits to, so you could so that you could go to that mannequin and switch from three or four preset outfits that you like on the fly. Just, all right, well, you know what? 
I think I want to go with my Mimikyu theme, or I want to go with my Pikachu theme, or I want to go with that sweet, sick, black and pink Professor Oak that my current character Sun and Moon is rocking. Just to be able to go and switch it out, just to give your room and your home a bit more of a yeah, reason to exist. and do things beyond that, like maybe the bed sheets get changed. Mm -hmm. Maybe get a special clock. Yeah, perhaps you could even change, you could even unlock new flooring and new wallpaper, new pieces of furniture by going out to these to these to these festivals, taking part in mini games throughout the game, or even winning them as prizes from from the World Tournament Cups that we've suggested in earlier battle or in, in earlier videos. Yeah, I mean the point is customization doesn't have to be just your character. There's items and places that you can customize a little bit. It's like your bases, except really the base stuff was fine and all, but it just got a little cumbersome. You go only specific spots. At least here it's your room. Yeah, at least here it's, it's your bedroom. And it would just be a kind of a neat, a, a neat thing that's unique, unique to yourself. There is one other, there is one thing from Pokemon Sun and Moon that I would like to see customized that we didn't get to customize that drove me crazy. Well, when you're riding on a ride Pokemon, you have that default protective gear. Oh god! It would yeah. be a, it would be amazing if you could actually swap out the colors or get different themed. Uh, you know, sets of, of ride gear to wear. Maybe, maybe now you actually have like a Geo Dude helmet, That'd or maybe, awesome. or you know, maybe you know, different padding and gear. Something so that it's not all those. Maybe really, change your harness. Yeah, your harnesses, that kind of thing. Just little things like that that really does add just a level of customization and depth. It makes it feel like it's your journey. This is your trainer. These are your Pokemon. This is playing your way. Yeah, I think that's the best option uh, for the Switch. Again, we're, I'm going to keep bringing this back. There's so much more power to work here. Than we have the 3DS. five times the memory room, and I don't even know how much more processing speed and RAM to work with here. And no, no forget that there's still the internal memory to work with, mm -hmm. and any expanded memory beyond that with, with uh, micro SD cards. So it's not like memory is going to be the problem. The point is just what's available there. And this is the kind of stuff that can be available for free DLC later for special like events throughout the year. We have a special like tournament thing going on in the real world. So and to celebrate, uh, the Pokemon Company releases a special event costume to for celebrate free. for taking for taking part in VGC, you know, uh, 2019 or whatever year it is. Maybe that maybe that unlocks a special VGC 19 themed shirt or 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 uh, you know room customization or ball customizations the uh, the possibilities there are are absolutely limitless and i know it's something that um, this is a different game entirely but the game world of warcraft they have uh, the company that makes it blizzard has a blizzcon and every year they uh, for people who, who go to their conventions and go to these big events they give out a a package that has a couple items for each individual game well, for world of warcraft it's oftentimes a a pet or a mount that goes along with it. And this is kind of another way of enticing people to take part in these community events to help grow the community and help keep interest in the series alive. Keep the competitive scene going and, and keep the community active and going. Because yeah, there's just different ways to customize. Why not make it items? Why not make it, uh, you know, clothing, pokeballs, mm -hmm. stuff for your room beyond that even. There's different options we can probably think of that we haven't talked about here. I mean, this is a way to really make the game interesting for you. But speaking of Pokeballs, and a little bit away from the customization, there's something that I feel has been missing from Pokemon for years now, and that is interesting new Pokeballs. Now, the now the Beast Balls are cool, mm -hmm. but they're a very limited function for a very limited type of Pokemon. I was a fan of Kurt's custom Pokeballs, I was and too. I've been a fan of the, the specialty balls that have been available throughout the series. Red I, ball, timer ball. Mm, I always dust, keep timer balls, balls and quick balls on me, and dust balls especially. Since uh, it's, since since we're you uh, since we uh, we've already talked about having the seasonal, uh, having having seasonal changes or whatnot, we can expand upon uh, quick or the quick balls and timer balls to have po or have Pokeballs that work better in a particular season. I know you have some yeah. other specific ideas. Oh, I have some very specific ones. There are Pokeballs out there like the Netball, which work well for Bug and Water type. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, let's have some more type specific Pokeballs. Let's have the Forge Ball, a nice red and silver Pokeball. That you, with a nice little bit of design to use for fire and steel types. Why not, oh, what's another good one? The arrow ball for when you're flying up in the sky on your service Pokemon for fly and you're catching Pokemon that are available up in that sky using a really unique Pokeball. It gives you a, an advantage up there. Or bring back horde battles, which I'd be fine with, but limit it to three max Pokemon. Pokemon, because the one V5 that was annoying as hell to me it took forever. So I actually enjoyed it, but then again, I was using it as well as Pokemon that attack the entire field in order to. Yeah, but if you're going for if you're shiny hunting through it, it's a pain. It, yeah, I can imagine that. So you go for one V3 in your horde battles, 
and you have a horde ball, which means if you want to catch something in there, you want that shiny shows up in that three, that little threesome, you know what you do? You have a horde ball. You weaken the one you want, you throw it, it catches it during the battle, and it makes the others flee. It ends the battle, but you get the Pokemon you want without having to whittle it down or allows, just losing it. It allows you to select the Pokemon, or it allows you to select one of the Pokemon out of that horde to try and catch. And then once it catches that Pokemon, it scares the others away, and that causes the battle to end. Exactly, and you get experience for catching anyway. Mm -hmm. And you can always knock out the other ones beforehand and still get the experience, but they still get the increase in a horde battle. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that is great, and those Pokeballs will be customizable as well. So we have new Pokeballs catching specific types. There's, you can have one that catches Psychic and Dark types, mm -hmm. or Psychic and Ghost types, uh, or Psychic and Fairy, that's what I was thinking. So, yeah, psychic, psychic and Fairy, fairy that would be a good We were one. calling that the, the Mystic Ball. That's right. The Mystic Ball catches Psychic and Fairy type Pokemon, and the other ball you were confusing that with was the Spooky Ball. No, no it wasn't Spooky. Was it? No. Pretty no, sure. Spooky Ball, or... Shh. Behind the scenes, look. Pokemon the Dread probably. Ball, that's what it was. The, the Dread, Dread Ball. ball. Ah, ah, yeah. Yes. Dark and Ghost types only. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, one thing we did forget to talk about in previous stuff... Uh, but we are going to say that this is where we're going to end our today's discussion. It has nothing to do specifically with customization, but it does have to do with how you play the game. Multiple save files. You know, people like us, we do Nuzlocks on occasion for a little fun. And what gets really bad is you have to use stuff like power saves to save your previous data so you can keep playing without losing all of it. You can always re-upload it later to your, to your cartridge. Well, let's get rid of that and have two or three save files per game. That way you can have your, your game where you played it normally, then have a separate file that you're using to, for, say, a Nuzlocke, and even a separate file that you're using for, say, like a randomizer, because uh, the one of the randomizers I like to do is basically uh, a, a, a Wonder Trade randomizer, where every time I catch, or every time I catch a Pokeball, or Pokemon, I go to Wonder Trade, swap it out for a random Pokemon from that that comes from Wonder Trade, and that's the Pokemon that, that I get to continue on my journey with. Or maybe you're someone like me who has kids, and instead of paying for all these copies of the game, you can have them play on their own file. Now, that may not be the best business decision, sure, but I think you can always put it, make it to two. This is something that's definitely available on the Switch. Um, or anywhere, really, but we have yeah. a memory for it on this. And it, that'll, that'll alleviate the problem that I know a lot of us had back in the day where one Large of your siblings thing. wanted to play the game, you allowed them to play, and then they saved over your file. So oh. all that work on that cartridge is gone. Happened to me at least three times with Pokemon Yellow. This is the way you don't let your sisters play anything. Well, sometimes I wouldn't have. So just steal my, my Game Boy and go play with it. Yeah. And so anyone who's got younger siblings knows that is a thing that happens. It's yeah. happened to at least yep. one of you in the audience before. And don't you lie. Know. Don't lie. You know it. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows when you've been bad and good. Would you like a milkshake? But my milkshake already brings all the boys to the yard. And they're like, oh my god, that's not a chick. <laughs> but the point is, the multiple save file, I think, was a long way. As I said, two or three. I think we could push to three, but two might at least be the best option. So we can at least have a Nuzlocke option, or at the very least, if you have kids or a sibling, an extra option for them to play on. Mm -hmm. And they can still give you reason to buy their own games, because frankly... You don't want to share, usually. Right. Let's just be fair. But having the options, always good. And people like being being given options. And people are willing to support things that give you options. Mm -hmm. I feel since, we, since we're trying to extend the life of this game, and we're trying to build so much post-game content and give you a reason to come back, the fair thing to do is not force you to restart the game every time you want to try out a, 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 you know, a, a new way to you play. Know, yeah, a new fan-based you know, play style. It makes a lot more sense to have multiple save files, or if you just wanted to play with one of the other starters that you didn't try with last time, just go ahead and load up a, 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 a new save and go from there. Exactly. But, you know, that's a bit our ideas for customization, uh, the expansion of the save file system, and new Pokeballs. Do you have any ideas of your own? Maybe a new Pokeball that we didn't come up with. I mean, it's possible. I'm not going to be able to come up with everything, but maybe you've got something really cool. Maybe you have something really interesting as far as a customization option. Maybe a, a cool hat, a cool shirt, maybe a cool kind of uh, harness to wear for your uh, server Pokemon when you're riding on them. Mm -hmm. Let us know in the comments down below. What cool stuff did you come up with that we didn't? Yeah, definitely, definitely share your ideas with the community. That's what this series is all about. Us spitballing on ideas, seeing where we're coming from, then seeing what you guys think. Though it won't be as long stretched out as this one has been. It's, it's just a Pokemon. There's a lot to discuss. So, yeah, thanks for joining us. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and to check out previous episodes up in here. 
Uh, we keep forgetting the beginning of the videos to you know point up here to it, but we try to put up there at least once or twice for you. We'll see what we can do. Uh, but don't forget to join us for the next and last part of this series of videos on Gen 8 for the Switch. So thanks. I'm Xandros. And I'm Drifter. And we'll see you next time on Concept Corner. Bye. Make sure you come back. The next episode is going to be a good one. Oh, yeah.